Tom Cruise caused quite a stir when he came to Ireland with his personal heater recently. He spent 90 minutes on the red carpet greeting fans and overall received a very positive reception. But no one mentioned the controversial organisation he's involved with, Scientology. Ex-Scientologist Pete Griffin is not one to shy away from the topic though and he joins us this morning on the Sunday Grill. You're very welcome, Pete. Thank you. Now, I suppose we could start off playing devil as advocate and say there's a lot of people who are in very different religions and organisations and they're not expected to talk about their belief system every time they arrive in a different country. So why Tom Cruise? Well, Tom Cruise is slightly different for a number of reasons. But before we go any further, I'd just like to say that Scientology is actually not a religion. The Belfast Telegraph ran an article this week that said... Scientology was an anti-religion. Now, I'm not sure what, what that actually is, but it means it's not a religion. Actually, I think it means it's against religion. When it started off, it was a self-help therapy, and it morphed into a religion along the way for tax purposes. So it was another way. It was a way of, like, you know, not spending as much money. Not that he spent much anyway, but... Uh, yeah, so Tom comes to town, and as an actor, that's okay. But let's not lose sight of the fact that he's basically just that. He's a, he's a man who play acts for a living. Uh, you know, kids do it all the time. Tom Cruise does it and gets paid for it. And as the poster boy of Scientology and the supposed number two, I think he has a responsibility to speak out about the fraud and abuses that go on. I mean, do you know there's something like 400 people lost their lives since Scientology began? And that's just like... That, that's like one too many you know it's just absolutely criminal that someone like tom cruise could should come to ireland be fated by the government be awarded certificates um actually there was a very good piece as well in the independent by martina devlin who criticized the journalists for not quizzing tom cruise harder about scientology and katie but i'm informed that tom had strict instructions that he would only do interviews as long as Tom, sorry, as long as Katie and uh, Scientology weren't mentioned. Chris Evans in England turned down the interview saying, well, if I can't talk about that, what the hell do I want to talk to him about, you know? So there's all that going on. Um, the other thing is that uh, the planned protest we had was severely quashed by the guards. Now, we'll, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But okay. You're, you say that Tom Cruise is the number two, which a lot of people know of the Scientology movement. Does that mean then if John Travolta came to um, promote a film here in Ireland or his wife or um, someone else who's involved in Scientology, would you protest them as well? And what are you protesting? Are you protesting them being in Ireland or are you protesting the, what would we call it? What do we call it? A movement well, look, that they're involved in? All the protests against Scientology since 2008, which is when Anonymous got on the scene, have been about behaviour not beliefs. They can believe whatever they like, but they can't be behave as though they're above the law. And they do. I mean, they keep files on people. They've got files on me, which they send to England on a regular basis, reporting on what I'm doing. They've no right to do that. I've got the Data Protection Commissioner onto them, but they, they release so much just to satisfy them. But, I mean, what kind of an organisation keeps files on private citizens? So you're protesting the movement that is Scientology and you're hoping to highlight this and the fact that so many famous people are part of this. Absolutely. As long as Tom Cruise does not speak out about Scientology, it's like an endorsement for Scientology. Now, fortunately, in this day and age with the internet and, and the exchange of information and truth, um, most people just go <laughs> and laugh. You know? And that is so true because there has been um, viral clips of him at talks and it really sounds like the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. So do you think that in that way it's a bit ridiculous redundant to protest against something oh, that people find very farcical? Not at all, because they're still getting victims and every day that goes by while this organisation is still promoting and gathering new people, because they they live on money and people, that that's, that's the lifeblood. Every day that goes by, another person gets conned and that's why it's got to be stopped, because you, you get nothing in return. So your protest was over two weeks ago now, so tell us what you remember from it and, and why you do where you went on the day. Well, I remember a very heavy-handed guard of presence. I mean, I, I had I had what I thought was a foolproof plan. I announced in the in the press beforehand that we were having the protest, and then my instructions, as much as I can give instructions, because there are no leaders in this, 
my suggestions were that people uh, don't wear masks, don't carry signs, but try and get as close to Tom as possible on the red carpet and ask awkward questions or get a shot of him with a sign in the background or, or a V for Vendetta mask because that mask has become representative of, of the organisation and the uh, campaign. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately, we got four people into the red carpet area, but unfortunately, they were searched and ejected because they had either signs, masks, juggling balls or chocolates, depending on depending on what. Individuals were stopped and searched. Um, the, the guards themselves did a great job, I have to say that, and I don't have a problem with the guards. I do have a problem with the person who ordered the guards to protect Tom Cruise, because that is absolutely unconstitutional. And if that's a government minister, I actually feel he should resign right now, because he's stifled Irish people's rights to protest just for a poster boy, you know, for, just, for the, just for a play actor. And that is absolutely diabolical, in my opinion. Do you not think that if a journalist or a TV personality who was known to be a bit controversial, I don't mean with his Scientology, but ask silly questions that could make a fool of Tom Cruise, they would also be on the lookout for them and inject them. Do you not think that it was quite a publicity he was given this uh, certificate of Irish heritage? Oh, yeah. Were you not part of that? And you could it could be seen as embarrassment and it needed to go smoothly for them. Well, of course, yeah, because these people don't like things to go um, against them. And Tom Cruise... I mean, you've hit the nail on the head. He actually banned certain publications from going near the red carpet. So it's like, hey, you can talk to me, but you will only listen to what I choose to tell you. And that, again, is objectionable. And for a government minister, I mean, don't forget the government's only there representing the people. For a government minister to decide on our behalf that Tom Cruise is going to be given the certificate, given a pint of Guinness, he uh, he was given Ross Common, but he denied it, and now he, he, wants, he wants Ulster. Apparently he's claiming that... Uh, uh, his family ruled Ulster. I mean, I can't believe... Like, I don't think he was actually told that, but now he's going around America saying it in his movie uh, premieres. And So what would you like to have happened? What would have been uh, your perfect scenario on that perfect day? perfect scenario would be Tom walks straight up to me, shakes my hand, and I say, Tom, what's going on? And then we have a conversation about what's been going on in the last few years in Scientology. I mean, he actually left apparently in the 1990s and was got back in. Um, that's a whole can of worms there because Scientology does confessionals where they get information from you and they do use it against you. They say that they don't. Uh, my friend Karen de la Carrier from Los Angeles recently published the numbers of people within a Scientology organization that would read your private folders. And it's about 40. So don't think you've got any secrets in those folders. You don't, you know. So he, you'd like him to tell you what's going on, why he's a member of Scientology Absolutely. and what get some sense from it? Totally, totally. Now, he's made claims in the past about how it's helped him with his dyslexia. His school friends actually said they didn't have dyslexia, so that's an issue. Personal issues I wouldn't even get involved with. I would want Tom to simply tell us why does he think that Scientology is an organisation worth supporting? Because until he speaks out, he's supporting them. Scientology aims, uh, for people who don't know, are a world without crime, insanity and war. And that's fantastic. But then they go about like convincing people that they've got the tools to achieve that. And in 60 years, they've, they've made no inroads into achieving any of that. So it's a complete flop as an organisation and continues to scam people. And that is absolutely unacceptable. Well, you didn't get near Tom Cruise, as you told no. us, but... You were a Scientologist yourself. Let's take a little bit of music and when we come back, we'll talk about your experiences right. there. I'm talking to ex-Scientologist Pete Griffin. He's been in the news recently as he tried to stage a protest when Tom Cruise came to promote his movie. Oblivion didn't get anywhere near Tom Cruise, but as an ex-Scientologist, you are a good person to talk to about this. I keep calling it religion. It's not a religion. I keep calling it a movement. Would you say it's a movement? Um, I, no, I'd say it was a scam, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. Let's not mince words here. Um, and, you know, to be fair to the people who are involved in it in Ireland, they are victims as much as anybody else because they actually don't know the truth about their own so-called religion. So how did you get involved in Scientology? What sort of a person were you when, when you joined this? Well, I was newly married. Um, I was working for the local council on the maintenance department. Um, my brother was a salesman. My ex-wife was a psychiatric nurse, which doesn't go down well in Scientology, and more on that later. So this is your new wife was a psychiatric nurse. You yeah. were newly married to what Absolutely. is now your ex-wife. Yeah, I think we were married for a year. 
And then my brother uh, got me one day at lunchtime and said, hey, I've read this book and you should read it. And he, he was being open and telling me about this wonderful book that he'd read. But there was something a bit strange about the whole conversation. It was like he was imparting some like state secrets or something. You know, it was like, no, you, want, no, you should read this book. There's a part of the mind that controls you. And oh, it goes on and on. And I got the book and I read the book and my wife got the book and read the book. And then she started doing courses at the place. And I'd never done self-improvement courses. I'd never looked at myself as someone that needed improving, to be honest with you. But um, I eventually went along. And because my brother and ex-wife were doing it, then it was OK. It made it safe. I'd heard it was a cult. I'd read some William Burroughs and he was an author I admired. But even that didn't keep me away from them. And by the end of my first meeting with them, I'd spent the next month's mortgage payment on buying processing, as they call it. So, yeah. So you said you'd never gone to self-improvement things before. Was there was there something going on in your life? Did you feel there was something missing that you needed? Not at all, not at all. What Scientologists do when they meet you is they do something that they call ruin finding. They have to find what it is that's ruining your life. And when they find that, they will just simply tell you that Scientology can help you. Now, that can be absolutely anything. You think of any problem that anyone can have, whatever you tell them, they can help you. So what ruined your life? Well, I didn't actually have a ruin. That, that was the strange thing. But the idea that I could improve sort of grew on me. So they said to you, there's nothing ruining your life, oh, but no, we can no. improve your life. On the contrary, on the contrary. I did the personality test and I was depressed, nervous. I was all the things that everybody is. I just disagreed with it all, you know. Um, and they're taught that if you do disagree, you move on to the next thing. You don't argue with the person because, you know, you're trying to make a friend. You're not, you're not there to upset them. So eventually I agreed that, yes, I could be better. And I think everyone could agree to that. We could all improve in some way or another. So I bought into the idea that I was going to become a better person and help Scientology to create this world without crime, insanity and war. So They sound like lovely ideals, don't, don't they? they? Don't they just, yeah. So what happened next then? Well, I joined staff and it didn't happen straight away. I mean, I should have really Sorry, known. you enjoyed staff. I what? joined staff. I, I became a staff member. You became a staff member. How did, did that happen so quickly? Well, it happened so quickly because uh, we ran out of money to buy Scientology, but we still wanted to do more. And they suggested to us that if we joined staff, we could still do Scientology and help other people to get the benefits of Scientology. And I thought, well, what the hell? We're young enough. Let's go and do it. So um, we both quit our jobs and we went to, to work for them. I should have known something was wrong, though. Then they sent us off for training to Sussex. And for the first eight weeks, I got no pay, you know, and I've been promised 200 pounds a week. And, and Were that, they putting you up somewhere? Uh, no, we had to find our own accommodation. And it was during this time that we sold our car, our house. So we actually sponsored our own Scientology training. Um, by 1992, I was actually bankrupted because of Scientology. I just couldn't pay my bills, you know. Um, it was it was absolutely terrible. It took five years for them to, to get to that point. But um, that's what happened. Yeah. So when did the turn come for you? So you're in this organization that's promoting an end to insanity, war and, and crime. What's, and crime. Yeah. When did it when did you suddenly think this isn't for me? Well, the, it, it began to happen after three years when the organization I was working for uh, suddenly decided that my wife was an illegal staff member because she'd been a psychiatric nurse. Scientology hates psychiatry. They've sworn to obliterate psychiatry from the face of the earth. Now, what kind of a religion is that? You know, I mean, it's a hate organization, to be honest. But um, she was immediately no longer a staff member. And I thought, well, if she's not a staff member, I don't want to be one too. You know, we've, we've got other things to do with our lives. We were still, you know, 100% behind Scientology and promoting it. But the minute I said I wanted to leave, the attitude of everyone there completely changed. It was like, it was like suddenly, uh, you know, I was the wrong colour or the wrong sex or I was the wrong whatever it was. I was just wrong for wanting to leave. And I was picked on. Uh, it was terrible, you know. I, I was sent away for... I suppose, looking at it now, re-education, but that didn't work. Um, it was just a dreadful time. So it took three years and I left, but I still was under the, the spell and I started up my own Scientology mission, just like the one here in Dublin. And I ran that for a couple of years, I think three or four, until again, like production began to suffer because you just can't keep this up forever, you know. And eventually um, I got booted out. 
you've left, you're you're gone a long time out of Scientology. Looking at it now, is there any advantage to it whatsoever? I'd have to say absolutely none. Um, you really are wasting your time because they lie to you from day one and the people who are lying to you actually don't know that they are lying. So they believe their lies. So that's that's how easy it is to get involved. You know, that's how easy it is to be hoodwinked because the people who are lying don't know they're lying. It's probably a good time to quote L. Ron Hubbard who once said, um, the only way to control someone is to lie to him. You can write that down in your book in big black letters. The only way to control someone is to lie to him. And then, of course, he spent the next few years of his life doing just that. So, But apart from money-wise, what else are you saying that Scientology does to a member? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I like to answer that by um, um, a friend of mine was asked a very similar question. Why are you protesting Scientology? What's, you know, why don't you go for the Catholic Church? And he said, because of all the organizations I've ever came across, Scientology ruins a person absolutely thoroughly in so many areas of life. And then he listed them all, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, socially. Because, I mean, obviously, if your friends are against Scientology, you've got to cut yourself off from them. And I'm sure he went on with a few more things. So I thought, that's a good answer. Mm. And truthful as well, because the one thing that anti-Scientologists and ex-Scientologists do is tell the truth about Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard, and they hate that. Can you sum it up in a sentence then, why you should not join Scientology? It's a scam. Well, Pete, thanks a million for joining us on the Sunday Grill. I presume you're in a much better place now. You sound as if you are. Absolutely. I'm having so much fun with this. And I really do feel that I'm actually bringing a little sanity uh, to the world rather than uh, going for the Scientology ideals. I think I'm actually doing it, you know, so. Have you any new hobbies? Are you a, a staunch Catholic or mass goer? Uh, no, I'm just like normal. You know, I go when everybody else goes. You know, so. Do you love a game of tennis? Uh, no, no. Actually, when I stopped smoking, I found this newfound energy. So I, I started um, refereeing Gaelic games and I was a referee for a, for a good few years doing football and hurling and ladies as well. So that was that was fun. Brilliant. Well, Pete Griffin, referee and ex-Scientologist, thanks for joining me. Thank you.